Is Steve Kerr with us there, Fritzy? Sure is. He's the uh, Warriors head coach, Steve Kerr, back on the program. Coach, how are you today? I'm good. How are you doing, Dan? Uh, how's your health? It's better. Thank you. Thank you for asking. But do you find that, I mean, I mean, it got bad. Will we ever understand just how bad this was? I know that certain things are kept private, but for you to be missing games and not sure if you'd be able to come back, I mean, it, it got to be pretty dark, I'm sure, for you. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't I wouldn't miss a game unless it was uh, it was bad. So it's been it's you know it's been a rough go, but um, I'm I'm doing better and uh, appreciate you asking. And uh, let's talk some hoop. How about that? Okay, we can do that. Could I take <laughs> Could I take you one on one right now? Oh, no question. You can, you can dominate me. <laughs> but this is but what it so took. Our analytics guy with the Warriors, so that doesn't mean much. <laughs> It does. It does help your health when you look out at that roster there. But I'm curious when you, what is it that you see that's missing with this team right now? Uh, nothing. I mean, I, you know, I mean, it doesn't mean we're perfect, but uh, I don't. I, I don't ever walk into the gym and go, man, I wish we had this or I wish we had that. I would be foolish to do so. I mean, we've got uh, we've got an unbelievable roster. We got a bunch of guys who are unselfish and can defend and play two ways. And I mean, this is. Uh, this is a fantastic roster. Did you reach out to Dwayne Wade? Uh, I talked to Bob Myers um, after Dwayne was uh, uh, bought out by the Bulls. Bob called me and, and said he had spoken with, uh, with Dwayne's agent. Um, but I, I don't think there was ever, um, you know, anything that was going to happen. I mean, you know, our team is pretty sad, and there was obviously a great uh, – spot for him in Cleveland and so you know a discussion was was had I know that that's kind of par for the course what move in the offseason made by a team caught your eye well I mean the obvious ones um I don't need to to mention um I thought the the really interesting one was Rudy Gay to the Spurs um hmm you know, it, it, the Spurs have the last couple of years have really um, kind of stayed stayed big in an era when uh, teams have gone smaller. And, you know, they've played Gasol and Aldridge uh, together, and, you know, and Duncan before that, and and, uh, and they've they've kind of zigged when a lot of teams have zagged, and um, I respect that. Obviously, that nobody's been more successful over the last twenty years. Um, but I think they, they they addressed that need for you know, more versatility on the wing, and you know it, the league really has become so much about uh, guys who can play multiple positions, and uh, and so I think they they addressed that with Rudy, and I think it'll be really interesting to see how how he fits. And uh, it seems like no matter who they pick up, you know that player succeeds and, and does well, fits into the system. So I think they're gonna they're gonna be under the radar as usual. Everyone's gonna talk about. OKC and Houston and and us and, and the Spurs will win their 60 games and uh, nobody will pay much attention. How would you describe the culture of the Spurs? I think you spent four years there. Can you put mm -hmm. it into words? Well, it's uh, it's hard to put into words because it's really something you have to experience. But I think there's uh, there's an unbelievable respect for pop. Uh, that every player feels immediately. And the reason you feel that respect uh, is because of who he is as a person. You know, it, his basketball knowledge is unquestioned. And, you know, he's one of the best in the game at, at um, planning strategically and all that. But it's just the feeling that you have when you go into the gym every day. You know you're going to work. Uh, you know what you're doing matters. But you know that Pop cares about you. Uh, you know he cares about your family. You know that he understands that um, we're playing a game. And, and there's a lot bigger things going on in the world. And yet the game means everything to him at the same time. And, and so it's a really, really nice mix of uh, just perspective and, and competition and, and, um, and, and dedication. And, and you can feel it. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons they've been successful for so long. It just carries over from one wave of players to the next. He's Steve Kerr, the Warriors head coach, joining us, Continental Tire Coach's Corner. How much did Greg Popovich – political views affect yours? Uh, well, I think we we share a lot of the same uh, values and views. 
And um, we talk, uh, Pop and I probably talk once every couple of weeks all year long. Um, he's one of my good friends and mentors, and, and I have great respect for um, his conviction, and um, especially as it relates not to politics, but as it relates to to um, dignity and and uh, the importance of words and actions and and how people conduct themselves and I think that um, uh, that transcends you know by you know partisan politics that's mm-hmm. for sure. Your reaction when you saw that you were part of the cover of Sports Illustrated this week? Well, um, I, you know I was a Sports Illustrated junkie as a kid. I. I couldn't have ever imagined uh, that I would be on the cover of Sports Illustrated, so I was pretty flattered. Um, but as my as my son told me yesterday, I'll, I'll bet you never thought you'd be on the cover of Sports Illustrated with Roger Goodell and uh, the, the owner of the Jaguars and uh, who else was on there. I, I can't remember, I can't remember who I was next to, but uh, it, it was kind of surreal, you know. When I somebody sent me an email with uh, with a photo of the cover, it's like, wow, this is. Uh, this is kind of cool. But then my immediate reaction was, where the hell is Kaepernick? I mean, he's the reason for this whole social movement in sports, and he wasn't on the cover. I, I was confused by that. And you had Steph Curry there, uh, Commissioner Goodell, Aaron Rodgers on there, Shad Khan, the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Is that the first time you've been on the cover of SI? I think I was on one time when I was in college, like one of those, uh, you know, tiny little photos in the <laughs> upper left corner. But, uh, you know, I, I, I may have put it up on my wall. I'm not sure. <laughs> Who do you think is the best player in basketball right now? Uh, oh, man, you're, you're going you're gonna to do this to me. Um, well, I'm asking you to be know. an analyst. Can you be an analyst and actually look? Not, no. You cannot. Okay. Not when I'm a coach. Because whatever I say is going to be uh, used against me. You Can know I that. take out your team and ask you who's the best player? Or is that still? Sure, yeah. Okay. So Durant. Take out my team. Yeah. yeah. So we take out your guys. The best player in basketball is? Oh, LeBron. Okay. LeBron. And uh, I would put uh, I would put Kawhi right, right there. You know, um, I, I just think that these guys are so dominant physically. Um, in an era when you really have to be able to guard every position, um, you know, those guys do it. That's one of the reasons Draymond is so important to us. Obviously he can guard every spot, but uh, these days um, you got to guard one through five. LeBron can do it. Um, Kawhi can do it. And both are dynamic offensively. Both have developed three point shots. I thought um, what LeBron did last year, I mean, he probably had the best season of his career when it comes down to it. Um, He's addressed all of the weaknesses that he had early in his career and made them strengths, and uh, he's just gotten better and better. Certainly would be nice to get you on record, you saying that Durant's better than LeBron, Steve. I know that's what you're trying to accomplish, Dan. <laughs> well, you uh, were a, I'm going to refrain from comment. You were a heady player in your time. You were... So. <laughs> you got to read the court. <laughs> Always see the court. Did you guys lift weights when you were playing? Uh, you couldn't tell based on looking at me. <laughs> I no, I couldn't tell. But but I Jordan. It, it felt like Jordan was the first to you know he brought in you know Tim as his uh, as his trainer and like a personal trainer. I, I don't know if anybody else was lifting weights back then. And fast forward to now, is that something that is you know day to day or something that your team is involved in? Yeah, I mean we we lifted. Uh... I, I will say this: the, my first uh, team in the league, 1988. Uh, I walked into the office of the Phoenix Suns, and they handed me a membership card uh, to a gym across the street, <laughs> and they said, "If you want to lift, here's your membership card." <laughs> Fast forward to now, uh, what is this? Uh, that was 88, so 29 years later, I guess. Uh, we've got. Um, about five people who help our players in the weight room every single day. Um, it's not so much lifting weights, although there are weights involved. It's much more uh, about um, balance and coordination and, and keeping certain muscles strengthened, especially with like um, resistance stuff and bands. Um, it, it's yeah, bands and and um, and then you know 
that uh, corresponding with work on the training table, keeping hips aligned, keeping muscles aligned. So there, there's been so much um, education over the last 30 years. You know, it used to be just go do go do some bench press and shoulder press and and some leg lifts and you know then you're done. And now it's there's much more of a science to it. And I don't know a whole lot about it, but I watch our our group and they know what they're doing. Uh, the president's response to Steph, uh, your reaction when uh, you guys were disinvited to the White House was what? Well, we were never invited in the first place, um, technically. I know there were some discussions uh, behind the scenes. Um, <laughs> but you were disinvited. I, I think we were disinvited before we were invited. Uh, none of it surprised me. <laughs> none, of, none of it surprised me. This is kind of par for the course. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously a lot of us have been outspoken uh, about, about Trump and, and, uh, on our team, uh, myself included. So it didn't, it didn't really surprise me. Do you have Republicans on the roster? I don't know. I've never asked, uh, any of our players, um, their political party. Um, I do remember about 20 years ago when I was with the Spurs, it was great. Uh, pop, pop used to divide shooting groups based on just like random questions. You know, it'd be like, if you're a, you know, anybody who, you know, is a Steelers fan or whatever, you know, go down that, that way. And everybody who's a fan of the Cowboys down this, you know, he would do stuff like that all the time just to keep us entertained. And, and uh, I remember one time he said, all right, all Republicans down there and all Democrats <laughs> down, down at this end, we're going to do two team shooting. And uh, it was, you know, it was like a 12 to three type thing. So uh, there, there weren't a lot of Republicans on, on that team, but there were a few and, and uh, but I, I never asked that question. And um, to be perfectly honest, I, I have a really hard time that um, this is portrayed as a uh, partisan political issue. Um, I, this to me, this has nothing to do with Democrat, Republican. It just has to do with humanity. It has to do with uh, dignity and, and and words and actions. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, what party somebody is affiliated to. It's just about respect and and uh, how you how you treat people. Good to have you back. Glad you're doing well. And uh, thanks as always for joining us, Steve. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Dan. Take care. That's Steve Kerr. I'd own him in a game of one on one right now. Own him. Of course, he can't move. But I. <laughs> that's. It's still I. And, and I have friends. Wins of mine. a win, Dan. Yeah, I mean, it is. <laughs> and, and I say that to a friend of mine who was so much better than me in college, but he put on some weight now. And I said, I would own you. And he goes, but it doesn't matter now. Yeah, it does. The rest of my life, I'm trying to knock off names that were so much better than me. You're only as good as your last game. Yes. Continental Tire Coach's Corner. Official tire, Major League Soccer. Soccer fans expect peak performance on the pitch. Also demand peak performance on the street. That's why Continental has built a tire for what you do, whether you're headed to the game, taking the kids to practice, or going for, well, off-roading. Continental has engineered a line of tires that includes best-in-class wet braking, superb handling. Continental Tire, proud supporter of the Dan Patrick Show. Visit ContinentalTire.com. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.